What is going on? So I just wanted to make this video. I'm going to take my car through the car wash when I'm waiting in line. So, but I wanted to talk a little bit about common dealership misconceptions or myths, okay? There's a lot of gray area that goes around the car, car business in general, dealership salesmen, um, how to tell if you're getting screwed, how to tell if you're getting a scam, good deal, bad deal, what to buy, not to buy, how to buy the car. There's so many questions that people have and I just want to help answer them. So, I printed out uh, 10 of the top misconceptions or myths and I just wanted to talk about these. So number one, is the internet the best place to get a good deal on the new on a new car? So, if you're shopping for a car, I do highly, highly recommend always go on a dealership's website and look at their internet pricing. Um, it is not a bad thing to let them know um, that you have seen the internet price. Um, in fact, most would prefer it because, well, I guess this is going to sound bad, but if you don't know the internet price and they're trying to make money on you, they're going to mark the price up. So I guess you can test the dealership at the same time. So, you know, I, I've seen it happen to, to many friends of mine that they've went to the dealership, they help, withheld that information, then they were able to find out that they were going to get screwed or whatever. Okay. So, um, like I said, profit's not a dirty word, but you want to make sure that you're not getting screwed and overpaying for a vehicle. So, uh, I do highly, highly recommend always look at the online price, go to the dealership, you know, the online price now to the dealership. The reason why the online price is, is the best place to find what their best price is up front is because the internet is such a powerful thing that people always shop the online price at any dealership in the U S I guarantee that probably 60 to 70% of their sales are from people on the internet. So those people are shopping, they're gonna look at you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 vehicles, and whoever has the vehicle that's most like what they want, that has the best price, that's typically who's gonna earn their business. So that is why dealerships price like that. My dealership does the same thing. If I have the lowest or the highest price on the internet, and nobody's even gonna call, inquire, nothing it doesn't matter how low the miles are doesn't matter how nice it is if i have the highest price on said vehicle it don't matter so yes the internet is the best place to go to make sure that you're getting a fair price on your vehicle uh, number two is paying cash going to get you a better price no so at the dealership um, i've had so many people that think that if they're paying cash that since it's such an easy transaction they're going to get a much lower price cash doesn't determine what the dealership paid for for the vehicle when they took it in on trade or bought it at an auction it doesn't determine how much money the dealership had to spend on the vehicle whether you're paying cash or financing the vehicle you're going to get the same deal either way so um now the only time that that cash may dictate things a little bit is let's just say um like right now on my lot i have a 2005 dodge ram um, with 30,000 miles. It is super low miles. It's a really nice truck, but it's still a 2005. Someone that is buying that truck is going to have to have stellar credit at any bank to be able to finance it. Because if you know, you, you might think I'm wrong, but go on any credit union or bank's website, look for auto financing and see their loans and rates. Typically it's going to cut off at some point where they're not going to list uh, rates and terms past a certain year typically because that means that they're not going to finance a vehicle that that's that is that year okay so unless you have excellent credit or a great relationship with that bank then they might do it so i mean that's just the way it is um i mean most dealerships would prefer you um to finance a vehicle um you know sometimes with them but um, which brings me to my next one, which is why I didn't get into it too much there, but is it better to bring your own financing? The answer to that is yes and no. So in some circumstances, let's just say you're in the military or you have a credit union where because you served in the military, they're going to give you rates that you only can get because you're in the military or whatever. Um, then yes, then that may uh, single you out to get better rates than what the dealership could offer. Um, but there are times like at, at my dealership, I'm a Chevy dealer. Um, and I'm a fairly uh, heavy uh, area where people don't have great credit. So I do a lot of uh, deals with General Motors uh, Financial or GMF. And I also do a lot, lot of loans with like Capital One. So I'm actually a 
Um, I believe the tier is called like Diamond or Platinum Dealer with Capital One, which means that um, if you are buying a vehicle through my dealership, since we're the Diamond tier or whatever, you're going to get a better rate going through me than another dealer that maybe is a gold or silver dealer with them because of how many deals we put through Capital One. So even if you were to go directly through Capital One, um, you may get a worse rate than what I could get because they're rewarding us and our customers because of how much business we bring them. So the answer to that is yes and no. Okay. Um, I apologize. One of these completely cut out. Um, number five says you need to buy the car now or the deal will go away. So the answer to this too can kind of be yes or no. So let's just say you're looking at a new vehicle and um, it's the beginning or middle of the month. You know, rebates only last a certain time. Heck, I've even seen times where GM in the middle of the month, if they're having a slump, will put out a rebate that lasts a week. Um, and after that week is up, that rebate no longer applies. So in this case, you literally have that time. Or likewise, like I said, if, if there's $3,000 in rebates uh, in this month, and then you decide to, to wait or whatever and you don't pull the trigger on it, next month there's only 1500 in rebates, well, the dealer's not going to discount the price of the car $1,500 because you waited and the rebates changed, okay? So rebates are from the manufacturer and they're free money. So, if, you know, I urge everybody, can it be likewise? Can you buy this month and it's $1,500 and next month at $3,000? Yes, but that is a risk that you have to understand that you're taking. I've seen it go both ways. Uh, number six, you should wait till the end of the month to buy a car. Um... I would say that any day really um, because you don't know what's going on at the dealership like where I'm at I'm in a smaller town so whether it's the beginning of the month middle or end of the month if if we had a couple days where it was real slow and we didn't deliver any cars then you know if you happen to come in you're still gonna great get a great deal then because the boss is gonna want us to get a, a car sold um, and, and off the lot and I mean you know that's just one of those things that it's situational it just depends on the dealership um, but likewise, I would say this, both the the first day and the last day of the month is when a dealer may be very, very, very aggressive just because A, they would want to get their month started off strong and B, at the end of the month, maybe the dealership, like I'm a Chevy dealer, so we have goals that we need to hit that General Motors sets for us on how many we need to sell new General Motors cars each month or certified pre-owns. And if we don't hit those goals, then we can lose our uh, our, our Chevy logo on the store. So the end of the month, you know, you may come in and they're like, we need to sell one more Chevy to, to hit our goal that GM set for us or whatever. And they're going to make it happen. Whether it's a, a deal that they make 500 bucks, thousand bucks and lose 500 bucks. It's more important to them at that point in time to keep, uh, hitting their goals that GM sets. Okay. So that is very, very important. Number seven, should you wait till the last minute to throw your trade in? This is one of those things that's absolutely detrimental. So I will say this, your trade is worth what it is worth, okay? So many people think that you need to go in, tell them you're not trading, and negotiate the price of the car that you're buying down as much as possible, and then throw your trade in. At the end of the day, the, the biggest thing that I hear about dealerships is that people hate how long they have to spend there. So if you wait until you've negotiated the price of the car down and spent an hour and a half two hours at the dealership and then throw your trade in and then they have to get your uh, trade information your vin your miles the sales manager the independent buyer has to evaluate your trade get a figure on it haggle on that now you're just costing yourself time so i urge everybody if you're going to a dealership just be upfront and honest if you're trading your vehicle save yourself the time okay I don't want to get a bad review because you wanted to listen to someone on the internet because they had a bad experience somewhere else and then you're mad at me because it took longer for you to buy your car okay it, it is one of my biggest things and one of my biggest beliefs I want to get you in take care of you have you sign your paperwork and get back out in a timely fashion so that way you're happy and you get to go enjoy your car instead of sitting at the dealership for eight hours and being hungry and getting grumpy and all that just give the information that they need, let them do their process, and I guarantee you it's gonna make everything so much easier for you. 
Eight, special ordering your vehicle will cost you more money. It depends on the dealership. Um, at, at my dealership, if you sit down and you're like, hey, I want to order the Silverado. You know, the, the new Silverados coming out have a, a new uh, dash in them, a new instrument cluster and everything that's all digital. So we have, I have a customer right now that wants to order one. We're just going at sticker minus rebates or whatever. So where I see the misconception on this can occur is like, say you come in and like with the, the rebates that I was talking about, say you come in and you order your truck in June and you're looking at the rebates that are available at that time and they're $4,000, but then your truck obviously doesn't come in for a couple months and then they're 2000. Some people would say that it costs them more money because they special order their vehicle. No, that is just rebates, okay? But I see where that misconception can kind of happen. So, um, the other thing to note is that you can find it on, on most manufacturer websites where you have a build and price option where you can see if there's options or paint colors or whatever that is more expensive. Um, and, and then that's just, it, just the way that's manufactured. Um, just options cost money. Nothing is free. The, the manufacturer is going to make their money. Um, number nine is you have to have your car serviced at the dealership you purchased it from. You don't. Um, except in some odd cases where there's a dealership near me that advertises a warranty for life on your vehicle. But one of the clauses is, is that you need to have the vehicle serviced there and you also need to follow your full maintenance schedule um, or you will lose the warranty for life. Now, one of the things with this is like, say you're 200 miles away from home, you still have to call the dealership and say, hey, I'm broke down, I'm this far away from home, is it okay if I have my vehicle towed to this dealership and worked on? Most of the time, they're not gonna say that you have to have your vehicle towed 200 miles back to there or whatever to keep your, your warranty that they offered you or whatever, but you know, the contract states that they could. Um, the only thing that I urge though, is that if you're buying a vehicle that has manufacturer warranty remaining, that you do need to have your vehicle serviced at a certified dealer. Um, the reason being, um, I have a friend that, that works for Ford and he had someone that bought in a pre-owned, it was like a 2019 or 2020 Ford Explorer with like 20 or 30,000 miles that the dealership had taken in, it didn't need much, you know, I don't remember what all they did to it, oil change, tire rotation, whatever. Um, and then someone bought it. Well, the person that bought it started having engine issues, okay? No fault to the dealership, but the person that owned it prior had their Uncle John or whatever doing oil changes and he wasn't actually changing the oil, he was just taking the money and saying, hey, yeah, uh, your oil's changed or whatever. So 27,000 miles or whatever on this Ford Explorer and had never had an oil change and needed a new motor. And since the work was the fault of Uncle John or whatever, and the work wasn't done at a certified Chevy dealer or Ford dealer, I mean, then the manufacturer warranty was void and they're not gonna cover the cost of the motor, which is a, a huge deal to the customer. And I understand that. But that's why for newer vehicles, if it, like right now we're in 2022, so I urge if you're still anywhere within a five year 60, or if your vehicle's three or four years old or whatever, have the work done at a certified dealer because if that's the case and something goes wrong, so long as there's records of it being worked on at a certified dealer, the manufacturer would fall back on that dealer for cost of issues instead of on you. Uh, number 10 says that you can out negotiate or out trick the dealership and to give you a better deal. This is just one of those things where people, you know, watch YouTube videos, they get told how to buy a car or whatever. I'm here to tell you that all it's going to do is, is waste your time and make it a, a very not so pleasant purchase experience. Okay. Like I said, I have so many videos on it. If you're planning on putting money down, if you have a trade, if you're trying to accomplish a monthly payment, if you're paying cash and you're trying to accomplish a set budget or whatever, just be upfront with the dealer. You know, they don't want to, um, I will say this, dealerships don't want to just sell you one car. They want you to have a good experience. They want everything to go smooth. They want you to be happy. That way you refer family and friends to them. So are there dealers out there that just want to screw you and make as much money as they can? Absolutely. But with this, I say, if you find a good salesman and a good dealership, deal with them, 
be upfront and honest. If they can make a deal work, they will. If they can't make it work, then they can't, okay? It's just black and white. There doesn't have to be this gray area where everyone thinks they're getting screwed, okay? So um, I'm next in line to get my, my car wash, but these are just some of the things I wanted to go over with you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below, and you have a great day.